What's going on, people? I am B. Dobbins for the win, and a few weeks ago, a small controversy erupted over a segment that Jimmy Kimmel did on video game live streaming and its audience. Now, I know this happened a while ago, and a lot of people have already talked about this, but I wanted to offer my two cents just because I want to highlight a few important lessons. I think we should all take away from this. So the gist of the original joke revolved around Kimmel making fun of people for watching other people play video games when they could just be playing games themselves. He compares it to going to a restaurant and paying someone to eat your food for you. He calls the new YouTube gaming feature the we should all be ashamed of ourselves for failing his parents channel. Kimmel has a god character come on and proclaim that he has created a race of idiots over this. Without a doubt, it is a mean-spirited segment. It's basically Kimmel calling us no-lifes, right? Now, this is actually a relatively tame joke in the grand scheme of late night, and Kimmel has gone after lots of different groups of people in a much more sadistic manner. And the thing with Kimmel is that a big part of his comedic appeal does revolve around being kind of a dick. In a lot of ways, that's what separates him from other late night hosts. Jay Leno actually called him out for this and brought up the fact that his most popular segments typically revolve around making little kids cry by taking their fucking Halloween candy and Christmas presents or whatever, right? Not that that shit wasn't funny, but it's important to take Kimmel's insults in context with the fact that this is what this guy does for a living. He's a professional shit talker. And he loves to provoke some sort of negative reaction out of people and then put that negative reaction on blast for his audience. That's what he's doing when he encourages parents to make their kids cry and tape it and send it in, and that's what he's done now with the online gaming community's overreaction to that original segment. People lost their shit to such an extent that he had enough material for a whole second segment, plus now he's got a bunch of free online publicity, he's got a dozen channels talking about him, including me, the original video ended up getting a million views, and there's no such thing as bad publicity. When these rappers get in their feuds, right? When Nicki Minaj calls Miley Cyrus a bitch at some award show. It's not about winning or losing the, you know, quote unquote feud. It might be about that if this were politics, but with Minaj and Kimmel, you know, they're entertainers. It's not about winning people's votes. It's just about making them look at you. And the best way to do that is getting people to talk about you on the internet. I see all these guys in the comment section of the video on Kimmel's YouTube channel where he posted that original segment and all these kids are going on about how it's the most disliked video ever. Har har Jimmy, we got you. As if he gives a shit about the dislike bar on a YouTube video. And he even did better on YouTube. You know, check this out. I don't know if you guys know about this site. This is VidStatsX. It's kind of like Social Blade, but I like it more because it has pretty graphs. But anyways, we can track Jimmy's channel stats. He does that segment on the night of the 27th, posts it on the 28th to YouTube, and wouldn't you know it, his average sub growth blows up those days and has remained at significantly higher averages than it was before. Why? Because so many people on YouTube were talking about him, and if this was hurting him in any way, he wouldn't have done the second segment. But he did a whole nother segment a few days later because he wanted to milk the shit, right? And he did so very effectively. And the second segment was actually what upset me more. This segment was Jimmy essentially calling gamers butthurt crybabies, you know, making fun of the super negative reaction everyone had to the first segment. And it was somewhat disingenuous because there were a lot of reasonable, intelligent replies and responses to that first uh, segment that he ignored. Because again, it's not about having an intelligent discussion, it's just about entertainment for the sake of entertainment. But anyways, he was able to take the reactions of a minority of the online gaming community and put their distasteful reactions on blast, and thus unfairly paint the online gaming community in a very unflattering light, which sucks because it contributes that much more to the cultural stigma that surrounds gaming. It's that stigma that concerns me. The reason that original segment prompted such explosive responses is because Jimmy touched on a raw nerve within the gaming community. That raw nerve consists of a lingering insecurity over the social stigma that has accompanied gaming since the 80s. If everyone was perfectly comfortable with people's general perceptions of their enthusiasm for gaming, they wouldn't have been so upset over this. You know, you call a tall man short, it's not going to bother him. You call a skinny guy fat, it won't upset him. You tell Brad Pitt he's ugly, he's not going to give a shit. You make fun of a professional 400 pound offensive lineman for being fat, he's not going to give a shit because he's proud of his weight. He uses that shit as a weapon. But when a gamer gets called a no-life, as Kimmel called us, that still gets to us. This concept of a no-life has been inherently tied with the concept of being a gamer for some time, for generations. Even gamers use the term frequently to put down other gamers, right? When somebody has already reached the new level cap on Destiny, they get called a no-life. If somebody's already 15th prestige and COD hasn't been out that long, they get called a no-life. If somebody is just super good at whatever game we're playing and they beat the shit out of us in a multiplayer match, it pisses us off, we'll call them a no-life. They are only better than us because they spend all their time playing this game because they have no life. They have no friends or whatever, right? This game is all they have, so it doesn't matter that they're better at this game than we are, right? You know you've heard people said it. You might have said it yourself. I've said it before, too. 
when somebody's gamer score is too high. You call them a no-life. I remember for a long time being embarrassed about non-gamers finding out that I had a gaming YouTube channel because I knew they wouldn't fucking understand. And eventually they did find out and I did get called a fag and shit. You know, it's a stereotype and it's been reinforced by countless TV shows and movies. Uh, and now Kimmel has basically taken it a step farther, right? You thought gamers have no lives? What about these losers who watch other no-lifes have no life? And really, this concept Kimmel touches on. Why are you watching it when you can be doing it? This is what drove the original stereotype too. Why are you spending time in an imaginary world when you could be in the real world? And the simple truth that everybody is too pussy to admit is that the vast majority of the time, for the vast majority of people, real life fucking sucks. We hate real life. We are organisms that evolved around the concept of adventure, of fighting to stay alive every day and every night in a constant state of fight or flight. And now we don't have to worry about that, and we're stuck in this mundane day-to-day -day reality that every first world human being hates. We're a dog with a fucking bone. You know, we all have on average 65 years of life guaranteed, and now we don't know what the fuck to do with it. We've had to come to terms with the bitter reality that when we're not fighting for survival, we get pretty bored pretty fucking fast. And that's something that human beings have been having to come to terms with for, you know, centuries even. And that's why things like alcohol have always been so popular. And there's a reason we have an epidemic of youth binge drinking now. An epidemic of pill popping, of binge eating and binge watching Netflix, and porn addiction. Because for the average person, reality sucks, so they seek escapism. And guess what? Gaming and watching other people game, spending most of your time in imaginary worlds and other interactive fantasies as a hobby, as an escape from the mundane reality that is your 9 to 5? Does someone really want to pretend that by doing that, you are somehow getting less out of life than these people who are resorting to you know, whatever substance, whatever extremes, kids getting blackout drunk as often as possible, all weekend, every weekend. I've been there. People go a little fucking crazy in high school. But I'll tell you, I much prefer some buzz gaming. You know, there is a wonderful adventurous life out there full of travel and trying new things and new foods and new places and meeting new people and making new friends and taking on new challenges and experiencing all that real life has to offer. But the unfortunate truth is that the vast majority of us are never going to experience that life. You know, Kimmel probably has that kind of life, and maybe that's why he can't grasp the concept of watching gaming online, but for most of us, life is school and work. And the big problem that all our politicians like to talk about these days is that we don't make enough money, right? Because we don't. And if you're on minimum wage and you make just enough money to stay alive so you can keep working, you don't have time or the resources for adventure. And it's not by accident that it ended up this way. And if you're working 40 hours a week, if you're going to school five days a week with homework and you got no real freedom to do anything on your own or even make your own money because you're not 18 yet, and if you've been stuck in that same place doing the same routine every week for several years and anyone under age 18 has pretty much been stuck in the same routine for at least a decade or more, then you know that real life gets pretty old pretty fucking fast. And when that happens, every single human being, every single one, finds something, some distraction, some escape. And for the vast majority of us, it boils down to only a few things. Alcohol, drugs, TV, and or movies, and video games. Generally some combination of all those things. Personally, I like to smoke a bowl, drink three Corona Extras, and play video games pretty much every night. And I have a lot of fucking fun doing that, and that's all life is about really at the end of the day. It's just about having fun and being happy, you know? It's almost like a video game, right? It's about like racking up points, except your points are your happy experiences. You know what I mean? And like some happy experiences are worth five points. You know, maybe that's like eating a Reese's peanut butter cup or something. And then some experiences are worth like 20 points. Like, you know, I don't know, having sex or whatever. And then other experiences are worth 100 points when you're fucked up on meth and you fuck two bitches at the same time. And then you have that happy experience that's worth a thousand points when you call in the tactical nuke in Modern Warfare 2. Life is just about making the most of whatever amount of time you have, and I think most people inherently recognize that. I don't know why gaming as a form of escapism has been so culturally stigmatized and sort of laughed at more than any other form of recreational activity. I could spend an hour trying to dissect where the no-life stigma comes from, but it's irrelevant. Human beings have a natural and consistent tendency to make very general judgments on cultures or subcultures that they aren't a part of that they probably don't even understand. This latest attempt at trying to belittle people for watching gaming is just another natural evolution of the original problem, which was the untrue cultural stereotype that has become so closely associated with gaming in the first place. And I actually think a lot of progress has been made, especially in the last decade, towards shedding that stereotype. A big part of that has to do with how mainstream gaming has become, right? I mean, if you count mobile gaming, a majority of people 
at least Americans, are gamers at this point, right? So you can't really bully gamers now. But Jimmy has basically uncovered the new way to define the same social caste that people have loved to target as nerds and computer geeks and whatever for generations. He's figured out that the true losers are now the ones that are watching games online and getting involved in YouTube and Twitch and whatever. Gamers are no longer the losers because too many people are gamers. So it's people whose enthusiasm for gaming is above a certain point. It's people who take it just a little too far. And I kind of recognize this in high school too, right? Like there were some games that people didn't look down on. Call of Duty, Madden, FIFA, GTA. But then there were still some games where you were kind of a dork if you were really enthusiastic about them. Minecraft. Something like Hearthstone, I'm sure it doesn't play well with the crowds. Now, I don't believe in stereotypes, but I was a total fucking nerd in high school. I've always been obsessed with video games. But I was also on the football team, and there were definitely significant cultural differences in how they viewed people's enthusiasm towards certain games. My friends on the football team, God love them, definitely stigmatized, looked down on, whatever you want to call it, on kids' levels of enthusiasm for certain kinds of games. And like I said, I remember getting called a fag and shit when, I mean, literally, that was the word. And I, you know, don't mean to offend anyone with that. But that was the word that came up a lot, you know, when they found out you have a YouTube channel. It didn't bother me, because we had tackling drills that day, and I got to hit the kid so hard he sat out the rest of practice with a headache. I kind of had the advantage of having a foot in both worlds and seeing how everyone viewed each other, and it was weird, because, like, I had really athletic friends and then really enthusiastic hardcore gamer friends, and I could never hang out with the two kinds at the same time. Like, they could not mesh. Not to mention my friends in the third subculture, which was the sarcastic, artistic, music, rock band, super hip group. That's where I imagine Jimmy falls to some extent as an entertainer. And really, all three groups looked down on all the other groups. They all thought they were better than the other groups, and the other groups were, you know, posers, morons, whatever. People sort of gravitate towards and conform to these subcultures, and then judge other subcultures as a whole, and usually in a way that clearly defines why their subculture is better than that subculture, right? That's what it all comes down to, is self-validation. It was weird. The football guys were dumb jocks. The gamers were no-lifes. The sarcastic, artistic, musical kids were posers and weirdos. They all, you know, I, I, I was cool with all of them, but none of them were that cool with each other. Stereotypes aren't always true, but there are definitely subcultures that form within, you know, whatever population ends up getting stuck together, but high school in particular. But anyways, back when Gen X, my parents, probably most of your parents, were in high school, the group that was stigmatized was basically just gamers in general, right? Now, like I said, because you can't stigmatize gamers anymore, because everyone is gaming, modern culture wants to move on to gaming enthusiasts. People watching game streams and videos are the new no-lifes. But just like stigmatizing gaming was unfair, because like I said, it's as decent a form of escapism as anything else, so too is it unfair to delegitimize and marginalize the recreational activity of watching gaming. And it's important we kill this potential cultural stigma this gross generalization of gaming enthusiast subculture before it takes off. Because all the shit does is make people feel uncomfortable about doing something they enjoy doing. It's discouraging people from doing more of what they enjoy doing. It's probably discouraging other people from even trying something they might actually enjoy doing if they gave it a chance. But the reason I wanted to make this commentary is because if we're gonna destroy that stigma, we need to know how to do it properly. Y'all motherfuckers need to learn some PR, okay? Life is politics, all of it, right down to high school. Your relationship with your family, and your friends, and your co-workers, whatever. It's all politics. It's all about political messaging. That is where the most purest form of power is derived from. You have to learn messaging. Crafting a narrative, selling it to people. Okay? The way many people reacted to this Kimmel bit is a perfect example of how the fuck not to do it. Yes, many people had reasonable and intelligent replies expressing their dissent and disapproval of his bit. But many more had hateful responses. People sent him death threats over it, right? Threatened to kill him and his family. And that kind of shit makes it look like we have something to be insecure about, even if we don't. It's like if you have a good match and you get some hate mail afterwards. All that does is confirm that you really pissed off that guy who felt the need to send you the hate mail, right? I enjoy getting the hate mail because it makes the win that much more satisfying. Because it's not enough that I win, others must lose. It's not enough that I feel good, others must feel bad. And I love it. I love it. When we act that defensively, people assume we have something to be defensive about. Not to mention it makes us look petty and belligerent. And the death threats thing makes people want to hate us. And it's not at all an accurate representation of gaming enthusiasts and stream viewers as a whole. And it's not just Kimmel that has received this kind of response from gamers. This shit seems to happen 
at a much higher frequency with gamers getting pissed off at people than other, you know, entities or whatever. It's a vocal enough minority that Kimmel is able to make an entire segment demonstrating how he obviously got under our skin. And his casual, somewhat older audience watching that segment won't understand that it's a minority. Suddenly, Kimmel can paint gaming enthusiasts as super angry, insecure no-lifes and present that false caricature to his audience. And the tragedy of that is that I really think this is kind of cyclical. I think many gaming enthusiasts feel insecure about this stuff because we're all probably aware to some extent of the stigma that has surrounded our subculture for some time. But there's nothing to actually be insecure about. We were just insecure about being judged by ignorant motherfuckers. But this kind of overreaction and Kimmel putting it on blast gives those ignorant motherfuckers that much more reason to stigmatize the subculture that much further and that only makes us feel that much more insecure about the shit in the long run and then we're that much more likely to have another defensive overreaction and that only continues the cycle over and over and over again right and y y you know if you call someone dumb who's actually insecure about their intelligence they're gonna get defensive but if you call someone dumb who knows they're not dumb, they're not going to give a fuck. It's just some dirt off their shoulder. And people recognize that instinctively. When you get defensive, it implies that you have something to be defensive about. If you accuse someone of lying and they get defensive, you assume that they must actually be lying, right? Hiding something. A significant portion of the online gaming community is acting like the guy who's insecure about their intelligence or weight or whatever. More people need to just shrug off these silly jokes about the shit. And if you act like there's nothing to be ashamed of, people will assume that there isn't anything to be ashamed of. And there isn't anything to actually be ashamed of. In the comments on that original bit, people kept saying, well, why watch sports when you can just play sports? Why watch football when you can play it, right? So Kimmel says, well, watching other people play video games isn't like watching other people play sports. It's like watching people play fantasy sports, fantasy football. But that's obviously not true. It's like watching someone play Madden football. And that shit is actually fun to watch if the guy's good at Madden or funny if he's really bad. And in fact, every year they run a Madden simulation of the Super Bowl and it predicts the correct winning team like 90% of the time. And Madden requires skill as do all games and that's why it's fun to watch other people play games for the same reason that it's fun to watch other people play sports if they're really good at those sports it's fun to see someone who can do something in a sport that you can't do it's fun to watch other people do something very well it's fun to watch a very talented person do the thing he's very talented at it's impressive it's interesting and that's true for games as much as it is for sports because they both take real talent the fundamental disconnect for a lot of people I think is that you know if it doesn't require physical skill then for some reason that's the only skill that counts. For some reason it's bullshit. But just because it doesn't require physical skill doesn't mean it doesn't require real human talent. I mean, everyone agrees that chess takes skill and there are huge chess tournaments with huge audiences and world chess champions. Nobody contests that. Nobody tries to delegitimize chess. I mean, they don't necessarily take it as seriously as most physical sports, but we do agree that it takes skill, that it is a competitive platform. Gaming does require talent. It's the same kind of talent you'll see in chess. Only difference is most games have many more pieces, those pieces can move in many more different ways and you have to do it a lot quicker. Gaming isn't a sport, it's an eSport and with that in mind it's fun to watch gaming and eSports for the same reason it's fun to watch regular sports. It's fun to watch other people who are really good at something do that thing. Even if it's not competitive like COD, MLG, or Dota, even watching a single player, you know, let's play on Fallout 3 where the guy uses no stim packs on the hardest difficulty and he doesn't use any saves, right, so he's not allowed to die once. It's pretty fucking intense when he comes face to face with a death claw, right? It's fun to watch. It's like at the Winter Olympics when motherfuckers are doing like snowboard freestyle. It's fun to watch someone talented make the most of that talented, even if you aren't that into snowboarding. And if it's something like PewDiePie where it's just basically just about the guy's personality and being funny, well, yeah, so what if people like that shit? Why do we watch reality television or fictional sitcoms like Friends that are just random, you know, bullshit about other people's lives that could bear, in most of the scenarios, could be happening in our lives, right? Why are we watching those lives, whether it's reality televisions or sitcoms about just average people's lives, when we could be living our own life? Because at that particular moment in time, our lives aren't that interesting because not everyone's life can be super exciting all the time. So we watch shows because it's designed to just be entertainment. And, you know, so for the same reason people love to watch sitcoms, other people like to watch gaming. It's a different kind of entertainment, but it's the same fucking concept. And anybody involved with gaming or game streaming already knows this. There's nothing to be defensive about. Don't let it get under your skin when he's so obviously wrong, because that kind of reaction sends the wrong message to people and gives them reason to believe that Kimmel's shit-talking is true when we know it's not. And never send death threats. Let's forget the moral implications of it for a second and just look at it with some cold, hard PR calculation. It is a counterproductive practice, people. 
all it does is two things. One, there's now zero chance that the guy who gets the death threats will give a shit about what your side has to say. And even worse, now said motherfucker, whether it's Jimmy or 343, has the perfect PR tool to blanketly paint the opposition as the bad guy. Remember how often 343 apologists love to bring up the fact that 343 had been getting death threats? Why? Because then they can paint 343 critics as total assholes. And it's unfair, but it just goes to show you that a few bad apples can completely ruin it for a larger cause. And I hope none of you guys are that stupid so as to sacrifice the larger message of an entire subculture just because you're having a fucking hissy fit. YouTube gaming is bigger than Kimmel. This isn't even the mainstream mocking a subculture anymore. This is some ignorant motherfuckers born in a different time who have failed to keep up with the times. If you want to beat him, just ignore him. Don't give him the reaction he's baiting you for. Don't give him material for a whole nother segment. Because then you're his puppet, even despite all your rage. The For The Win query of the day is when were you the most embarrassed about something gaming related? Or maybe weren't embarrassed, but when has someone made fun of you for something gaming related? For me, the most annoying shit was when I played Warhammer back in the day. It actually wasn't a video game. You would build models and then battle them on a tabletop. It was pretty cool but I'd have pain on my pants all the time and kids would give me hella shit for it back in like fourth grade. But it was just dirt off my shoulder cause even back then I had bitches sucking me off under the table as I rolled 20 sided die. Please remember to rate. This is Batman, signing out. To the last one left. Well, you'll just have to figure it out. <laughs> what the fuck? Hostile is down.